Hello and welcome back to How to Connect with Humans. This is Series 4, Episode 3. And today we are going to come from here. Well, not from here because that would be sort of my neckline, more like <laughs> here. And that uh, is like, so from the heart, <laughs> from the heart. Hello, Mike, how are you? Hello, how are you? Well, he's got my heart, so he's from, <laughs> from there. <laughs> and um, so we have somebody that we admire, we, we learn to love, uh, reading her stories, and there's so many stories she collected for uh, an amazing cause. Um, our guest speaker today is Nicola Drew, and she's the author of From the Heart. And uh, if you don't have it, we highly recommend it. Here it is. It's got a beautiful painting from Paul Locke, who we also love dearly. Um, this book is fantastic. And we have many people here that have contributed with their stories. There's, um, uh, there's 40 plus people, 46, 49. Uh, Nicola, Nicola is going to tell us properly how many that contributed to this book, and so many, like us, that actually pasted it line or have a lot of thinking about, you know, <laughs> what, what to say and if it was going to be good enough. So uh, you're going to have to do a second, third, fourth, fifth book, I'm sure. So welcome. We absolutely love having you here. Thank you so much, Nikki. How are you? Thank you. I'm really well. Thank you for having me on. And uh, sharing the book, which is wonderful. Yeah. Oh, Lorraine's got hers. <laughs> <laughs> the club. <laughs> oh, <and laughs> everyone's splashing their books. Brilliant. Yeah, we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to do a picture at some point with everybody with the book. And um, so, um, what I I absolutely love is that. Um, you know, some people ask us uh, like how we came with this idea to share the principles and help people. And uh, for us, it was during the first quarantine um, as well. And um, it was just an idea of just doing one episode maybe with Jan and Chip Chipman and then in turn it, in, into more people that said yes and yes. and. And we wanted to serve somehow without knowing if it was going to be any good or it was going to, you know, people were going to like it. But we, we did that. And um, you have a beautiful story in this book about uh, sort of uh, how it all started and then it came into be this. So um, would you mind sharing that with us? Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, well, this little book that looks so innocent, uh, it, it decided it wanted to come into the world and it chose me to be the person that made that happen, <laughs> totally um, unsuspectingly. So um, a little bit like you, it was the lockdown and um, I'd been, I had started to write a book uh, a couple of years ago and it was one of those where I would binge write and then think oh what have I got to say and I put it down and um, picked it up and did another thousand words and put it down and, and it was still just lying there and I thought well at the same time a friend of mine Maria Liffey Wood who I think you probably know from the three pre community she offered a, um, a coaching a six week coaching thing for beginner writers. And I thought, well, I'll do it during the lockdown and I'll see if there's any legs in this book that I'd already started. And so I, I began that. And then um, this was July time by this time. And I went on a, I think it was a Monday evening call with the Beyond Recovery and the Beyond Truth gang, you know, the prison, the uh, guys from the prison. And you know what they're like, you've had a lot of them on. They're just so full of love and <laughs> energy. And I just came off the call just feeling amazing and just 
wonderful about transformation, you know, how transformation can happen to anybody, anywhere, at any time, it doesn't matter what they've been through. And didn't really think much of it. And then a couple of nights later, I was drifting off to sleep, not particularly thinking of anything. And the book idea, I can only describe it as it was sort of downloaded. It was like, oh, here's an idea for a book and I'll do the first part, then I'll get people to contribute. And, and it was just, oh, wow. It was arrived without even being asked. And then I went to bed, you know, I went to sleep excited. And by the time the next morning, which is something <laughs> people might resonate with, I was thinking, oh, wow, well, you know, it would be a lot of hard work. And who am I to, you know, be writing a book? And I, don't, and, and I was like, oh, no, yeah, perhaps not. And then later on, on the telephone, I, the words came out of my mouth to my partner who lives in a, a different house. And I told him the idea. And then it was just from there, I was just, he, he was like, no, this book will happen. And I, and I think there was a part of me that knew once I'd said it, it, it would happen. And then um, because my son was turning 18, um, I thought, well, I'll make it for the charity that helped support us when he was born. And then of course I had to do, you know, I had to do it. And the next thing I knew I was writing out to, my contacts asking them and you know this so the book just held me to account all the way through it's like I am coming into this life and you're going to be the one that makes it happen <laughs> and then um that was July and I set a really unrealistic deadline of the end of August which was my son's 18th birthday um but as it happened it was published on the 28th of October so it was really still quite a short space of time so yeah very very um so um what's really sweet as well is that so um the charity that you're talking about it's uh it's uh, a heart link uh, and it's the children's uh charity uh heart link and um and uh so uh your your son was born and then there you are needing help and they came and help you is that is that right yeah yeah they yeah do, do you want me to talk about part one of the book in sort of order of it's up to you you know feel like um i i i quite like that you felt um what i find really sweet is that it doesn't matter how long it takes you to create something you wanted to thank them and mm. and it like when it when it came out it came out so um yeah. so i i guess uh many people don't know what was the reason why you you know your your baby needed help mm. and what the charity did and how important yeah. they were um so it's, uh, I guess it would be lovely to share that. Yeah, so I had a, um, a normal pregnancy, had all the scans, everything going as normal. And I was actually booked in to have them at a midwife center, a, a water birth. But as luck, was have, luck would have it, um, he went overdue, so two weeks overdue. So I had to be induced, so I had to go to a hospital, which I was not happy about at the time. but. <laughs> As the story progresses it was it was uh, very lucky so um when he was born he looked really healthy but when the midwife put you know they put him on your sort of stomach chest and he opened his eyes and looked at me and i knew and i said there's something wrong with this baby and luckily for me the uh, um, I'd been in labour for days and a midwife who I'd been with a long time, she stayed in the room, she stayed past the end of her shift and a new midwife was dealing with him and she was like, no, no, look at him, he's a really lovely, healthy boy. And the other midwife stopped and she turned around and she said, let me take a look. And she said, oh yeah, it sounds like he's got a bit of um, mucus on his lungs, I'll, I'll get it out. And the next thing I knew, cut a long story short, he was down in intensive care and he had a really rare heart condition. 
um, which normally, what normally happens is with those babies is that because there's a, a valve open while they're in the womb, that takes two or three days to close. So the condition is missed because the blood is able to travel around the body through that valve. And then when that valve shuts, the babies go into heart failure, they go blue and it's, uh, you know, it's really serious. So it was really lucky that um, we caught it quite early, but yes, he needed surgery the night he was born to keep that valve open to keep him alive. And then at 12 days old, they did open heart surgery on him to move the plumbing around, you know, to make it how it should be. Um, and the charity, uh, they're amazing. They, they provide accommodation at the hospital. So you don't need to be tuning and, you know, you can literally live on the ward. Um, they, they provide emotional support um, whenever it's needed. They have um, bereavement things when, when families have lost babies. Um, and, and also stuff for the children. So often children in these conditions can't go to normal activities. So they have special outings and adaptive parties and different things. So, um, and it was set up by a family whose daughter was seriously ill. And so it started off as like a, a, a parent support group, but it, it, it's actually, um, I don't know if you've heard of ECMO, which is a really high tech, um, piece of equipment and technology that keeps people alive who are in the most dire of health. That charity actually funded the first trials of that in the UK. Uh, so it's not just babies and families, they do amazing work for the general, you know, the population in general. So it was nice to give a little back and I've just, um, through Amazon, they make you wait 90 days for the money to start coming through. And so I've just been able to send £410 across to them for the first bits of the royalties that are coming through. So that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> if you see the group, we have many here clapping and, and yeah, yeah. about this. And, and we're very lucky to have many of the people that contributed with their stories here. Um, so you send the message and then uh, I guess um, some people start replying. And, yeah. um, so how was that? <laughs> it was a whirlwind, to be honest. <laughs> I, I um, yeah, it was just people were really on board with the idea. They really liked it, and you know, lots of people who perhaps couldn't contribute for whatever reason, they sent some money to the charity, you know, really big coaches and, you know, um, and then it was, it, it was really exciting. It was like, oh, this is actually going to happen because still at that point, I was like, well, the whole premise of the book relies on contribution. And, and if that doesn't happen, then the, the book doesn't, it would be a really short, short book, <laughs> part one. Um, and so when they started coming through, it was a mixture of, oh, this is actually going to come to life. And then it turned into excitement as the names came through. And I could see from the people who were replying that they had really different stories, really different backgrounds. So it wasn't just all through, you know, coaches or anything. It was people who I knew had had transformations, big transformations in their life that to them probably would perhaps never have told their story, you know, because to them it, it perhaps didn't seem that big. Um, and it was, it, yeah, it was wonderful. And I asked, I gave people the option of uh, writing it out or coming on a Zoom call with me to interview them. Um, and that was a lovely experience as well, because sometimes a completed article a chapter would just arrive and I'd just be blown away by the you know the the content and then I'd get a message saying oh I'm not, I'm not sure if it's all right or not you know and I'm like oh my god I'm I'm crying I'm crying here you know and then it was nice to um do the zoom videos you know I interviewed Michael Neal and 
got all starstruck and um, so people were just really generous, really generous with their time and um, I think it's it's a nice mixture of different voices that people will resonate with different stories. Yeah, so yeah. Well, that's thing we found very moving is that, um, so this, this beautiful book that had its own idea of coming out, you know, when it did, um, <laughs> but, you know, it happened that it was like your, your son's 18th birthday and made sense to sort of like try to do it as a, as a big celebration, I guess. And, um, but what happened is that coming out during the pandemic where the world suddenly went into something so unexpected and people were alone and going through um, hard, many people going through hard times, not that everybody experienced the same thing, but um, so this book came out to, to bring a lot of hope, a lot of hope because there, as, as you're saying, Nikki, there's so many different stories here of people um, finding hope and, and seeing the, the impossible happen or, or just simply being able to stop seeking change in themselves or fixing themselves or, or being able to, to live beautifully in, in hard situations. So, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about like, as we were saying, you know, like people in prison, for example, and, uh, and their experience of, of the three principles coming to this understanding, just help them being at home, um, even in places that didn't feel very homely. Mm-hmm. So this came out from the heart to, to say where you're at home and you may not be, we're all at home pretty much. Um, still, this is uh, February, 2021. Um, and the, the beautiful thing is this book came to help so many other people um, with these stories. Um, and we know from our experience that um, people hear, hear things. We have, you know, messages of people saying um, how touched they are or how moved they are and, um, uh, and what, what a gift. You know, I know some part of the money when you buy the book goes to produce the book because obviously it needs to be made and then all the rest you, you donate. To, to the charity, but also people are getting this, this amazing message, this, this amazing um, opportunity to hear something that I'm, I'm hoping also some people here will, will share with us. Um, so that's, uh, you had the, the courage and the strength and and you saw it and you did it. Um, so uh, thank you so much for that. So should we open it up to see if uh, people want to share or to um, ask questions? Would that be a good idea? Yeah, I can see people. It's going on. Yeah. So just a minute. Okay. I, I can't stop like <laughs> hanging the boot. <laughs> right. So um, either unmute yourself and 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 just uh, talk to us, or you can put your little hand up that you have down there. Um, so feel free to to do that. Hi. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, I just wanted to um, thank Nikki um, for asking me to contribute to the book because I'm not a writer. I've never written anything, but it was it was just such a it just turned into such a beautiful thing. 
And um, I had a lot of thinking about contributing a piece that, you know, it'd be rubbish and all this, but, but it was just such a, such a beautiful thing for me to do because I was able to, I was full of emotion at the arrival of my new nephew and I hadn't really talked to anybody about it, how I really felt about that. And I was able to write what I couldn't say out loud. And it was quite difficult, right? You know, I was like crying a lot writing it. It's a very short piece, isn't it, Nikki, in the book? Um, but it was, it was just a really powerful experience for me to write that. And it was so genuinely from, from the heart. And, um, and then when the book came out, I mean, I just got a casual message from Nikki saying, would you like to contribute a piece? So I didn't really realize the significance of it. Cause if I had, I'd have probably been a bit, <laughs> a bit like, oh no, not me, um, not little me sort of thing. But when the book came out, I just couldn't, I was just couldn't believe it. And I gifted it to several friends for Christmas presents. And they absolutely loved it and got so much from it. And they actually read it cover to cover, whereas I use it as a dipping book, you know, before I go to sleep, or I'll just open it randomly and just read a story. And I was just like really surprised. My friends just like read it cover to cover and they were really impacted by it. And another really lovely thing that happened was Nikki shared with me um, afterwards that somebody she knows had read my story and been and it had really resonated with them and it really touched them which at the time of me writing it I it never occurred to me that it would it would impact any, anybody else really um so that was like really really lovely to you know to do that and I've carried on writing as well I've carried on journaling and it, it's I found it a very helpful thing for me so I just wanted to say thank you Oh, thank, thank you. L Lorraine's a classic example of someone who's like, no. <laughs> but I, I, I know Lorraine well, and I know how deeply she sees the truth of love and true nature. And, and it came through beautifully in a story. But it was, and it just goes to show, doesn't it, that all of us have got something to share. And how many times, so often we just say, well, who would want to hear, you know, me? No, I've not got anything to say. And it's not until we, we pin ourselves down and, and, and share their written word or, you know, on Zooms or however it looks with friends. And then the ripple effect, you never know where that, wave is going to go like a really good friend of mine like Loren said message me I'm in tears this is so profound what is shared in this chapter and it, it shifted something in her that she hadn't been able to access just by read, reading those words um, and that's the power of sharing from the heart isn't it it's the power of exploring that aspect a deeper aspect of us that we are, we all are that, so we all know it. It's only the mind that tells us we don't. It's only the mind that temporarily veils it from time to time. But um, no, and, and, and who knows where that ripple effect will end, you know, just on and on, so. And with, with this understanding, it's, you know, regardless of, of our insecurities or whatever right? with this understanding we're more likely to to actually take that step I mean you know previously before I had this understanding I I, I would have just said no <laughs> and that would have been it mm. yeah. Um, yeah whereas I still had the nerves about it you know I still had the apprehension about it but um but did it anyway so I, I, it also showed me how far I've come as well. So, okay, Can I just comment on what Lorraine's just said? Because I'm in the same boat as her. Um, when Nikki asked me to write my piece for the book, 
it, it, more or less the same as you, Lorraine. I was like, why me? You know, <laughs> I'm just little old me going about my business. And then I find out that Jack is contributing and Mavis is contributing and, and Michael is contributing. I'm like, I can't compete with these people. Um, but I think, Lorraine, you just said it all absolutely perfectly. It, it doesn't matter who you are um, to get this understanding and the knock on effect that Nikki has just mentioned. Um, of you know, the ripple effect um, that you've talked about, Nikki, about you just never know who it's going to reach and what a positive impact it could have on someone. Yeah. And I hope you don't mind me saying MB, but MB's had a huge transformation in her experience of, of life. Um, and a little bit like me, that I'd had openings years ago before I knew about three principles, before I knew anything really spiritual. Life had graced me if you want if you want to say that some opportunities to experience the deeper and the nature of who I who what life is and who I am and I didn't understand them I knew it was the truth and I knew I, it was like a glimpse a tantalizing glimpse of possibility and um and that happened to MB um and then Along comes an understanding of the three principles years later. Again, I wasn't looking for it. I happened across it and it was like, oh God, that makes sense. Of course, you know? <laughs> and so that was really nice that we both had life experiences that made us different, that showed us who we really are, but we perhaps didn't, have the language or the understanding to to put it into words or um and the, and the mind's really good when when we have a, a really deep experience of our true nature and the mind can never understand that because the mind is absent when that happens and so anything the mind doesn't understand it will either dismiss you know or it will give you amnesia about it <laughs> somehow and that certainly happened to me when you know um, my son was in intensive care I told a story in the book about just dropping out of fear and falling directly into pure love and knowing without a doubt that he would be okay not that he would live and that whether he lived or died who his essence would would live on and and that all of the differences between me and him and the machines and the nurses it just fell away and there was this beautiful feeling of love and and I didn't understand that and, and it lasted for about three days I didn't tell anybody I thought I was having a, a break it was beautiful but I thought I was having a breakdown like I'm losing connection here's my baby covered in machinery and the doctor's telling me it's touch and go and I'm feeling bliss and love and connection and deep peace and and while it was happening there was no question there was no mind the mind had just frightened itself out of existence for a little while but as it came back in it was like oh my what's happening like I've so the mind made me think there was something wrong with that you know that it wasn't normal and you know um and so I didn't tell anybody didn't tell anybody for well until I came across this understanding I was like oh I fell into truth I fell out of the fear-based terrifying future past story the thought system the the stale terrifying stuff and I landed right into peace and love um, and that that's there all the time but we just don't experience it um, through the through our normal way we think about life and so the coming across the three principles gave me a language 
even though it's really hard to talk about the three principles, but it helped me understand what that experience was. Same as MB in Peru, when, you know, she had this amazing, you know, oh, here I am. This is who I am. Not, not all the programming, not everything life has told me, not all of the negative stuff. You know, here I am without all of that. And oh my God, I'm the same as you and you and you. That's who we are. You know, so um, it was quite. I, I, I just found it bizarre though. When it was happening, when I did a, a trip to Peru um, and did the um, trek to Machu Picchu, and it take, took four days and four nights to trek um, to get to the citadel. Um, and there's this peace and this raw, pure love that I felt, and peace within myself. And my peace in the book is called Goodbye Girl. And it, I, I, I can only describe it as grr because I carried this grr around with me all the time and I didn't know why. Um, and when I was in Peru, it just, it left me. Um, and I didn't realize that all of this had happened to me until I came back. Um, and like Nikki has mentioned, it was, it, it took a, a few years um, for me to wake up <laughs> um, and the pieces of puzzle started falling into place. Um, and I can reflect back now and, and understand that I was given that, that, that opportunity um, to, to, to be in that pure love and that most amazing peaceful place um, within myself. But I didn't know it was happening at the time, um, but that's okay because it happened and that's all that matters. <laughs> So beautiful. Thank you so much. And um, this is when we when we say that uh, we're all sitting in this perfect well being in this um, state of mind that you found on the track and um and lorraine found on uh, her beautiful nephew being born and how thankful and the gratitude that comes with us and uh, that we are all sitting in that we all have it like whether you are in machu picchu or you are sitting at home or you are sitting in a prison right now or you have lost your business or your house or uh, or some people some people in your family or people that you loved so much um we're all it, this is this is the thing that these stories are, tell, are are telling us that so many people like in the middle of situations like nikki was describing having a baby that you don't know your first baby as well it's not that she knew from previous experience what to expect like her first baby in this situation all covered with wires and noises and she found profound um uh, feeling of feeling calm or that everything was fine and um and you know, you, you were one of these miracle babies. That then <laughs> we, we saw we saw uh, Nikki's son today yeah. uh, briefly with uh, his beard and a bit of a mustache and so they like you know his <laughs> head <laughs> and his hood. Uh, so he's doing really well. And um, <laughs> but you were you know you were born and you were very premature and um, and you were told that you know you, you wouldn't. You wouldn't walk, you wouldn't... Yeah, 11 months I was told that I wouldn't walk, I wouldn't talk, and everything, you know, everything that I defied. Um, and I remember more recently that I saw pictures of me when I was a baby in an incubator, 
having, like you described, Nikki, everything around me or wires on me and everything. And to look at that and to think, wow, I'm here. And yes, I've got cerebral palsy, but it doesn't define me. It doesn't define who I am. And I, I say this quite a lot, but it, it's it's kind of made me who I am. I say to you, don't I, when you, well, I think when we first met, you said something along the lines of, would I be the same if I didn't have my disability? Or would I choose not to have a disability? And I said, no, I'd have my disability because without my disability, I wouldn't be me. And I've kind of learned to, to kind of drop all the barriers that were put, I want to say in my way, but it's not really been put in my way. It's the, it's the labels that have been put on me throughout my whole life. And I've kind of gone, you know what? I don't care what labels are on me, whether I'm going to walk, whether I'm going to talk, whether I'm going to eat. You know, I'm just going to be me. And luckily, I'm here today being able to talk to everyone here and just enjoy the experience of life. And to be honest, in this eight years that we've been together, um, Wayne is always happy to try everything. Like, there's nothing stopping him, you know? I probably have a lot more thinking about <laughs> things that probably, no, I'm not going to be able to do, or like, you know, maybe that's not going to work. But we just goes tries things. It's like, there may be six steps, and we go like, oh, we're not going to be able to get there. And it's like, oh, we'll find a way, you know, if I will. Um, we go on holiday, and we both sort of now drop on the side of the pool we roll and then we we go into the pool that way and then people come around to say like do you need any help or anything i know it's just like we just take it out that that's the way we both now get into the pool you know <laughs> <laughs> and and we do things so it's opened my eyes right you know mm. on, on how many limitations i had put within my thinking i think i used to do the same though <laughs> In a sense of, I always used to look at ground floor flats or I used to only look at houses without no steps, so like bungalows and things like that. Now, I remember looking at houses the other day because it's one of the weird things I do. I look at kind of houses that are like, oh, that would be nice to live in. And I'm just like looking at ones with like stairs in and things and I'm just thinking, you know what, if it has stairs, I'll deal with it. I'll train to be a commando and just, you know, commando up the stairs, it'll be fine. <laughs> Which is not going naked up the stairs. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> when you do this sort of thing and go up the stairs like that, we are having to use um, <laughs> just like that we do. Um, but, but this is the possibility of uh, discovering that we are way more than we think we are. And, uh, and that we're always fine, no matter what. And um, your story, Nikki, and, and so many stories in here are, is, is what they're sharing. And, and that's why I absolutely love this book. You know, I've got this book next to a missing link. Oh, wow. <laughs> Great indeed. <laughs> it's my absolute favorite, favorite book. And, uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, I think as Lorraine was saying, it's nice to just have it next to my bed and then go and, oh, it's like, you know, you get another, it's like having a box of chocolates, you know, <laughs> and you just go and get another, another beautiful story, uh, which is just two pages. Um, so uh, we have more people here that it would be lovely to hear from them if you want to. I've share. got it marked for MBs tonight. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's wonderful. <laughs> I hope it doesn't put you to sleep. 
and Lorraine is 126. There we go. Let's let we, we do that as well so people yep. know. <laughs> <laughs> Just talking about the missing link, Paul's on the call tonight, and I don't know if you've seen the new series, hi Paul, that um, Judith Sedgman, Bill Petter, and Dave Hill, and some other ex, ex forces and Paul himself have spent hours and hours creating a free resource on YouTube. What's the name of the channel, Paul? Can you remember? Uh, it's Missing Link for Veterans. Missing but, Link for Veterans. But to be honest, um, it, you know, there's some really lovely people talking about uh, and, and reading the missing link. It, it's fine for anyone. I mean, there are some slants to it with with military side of things and um, PTSD and stuff, but it's a, it's a very very nice uh, thing to listen to or watch. I, I spent hundreds of hours going through it, and it was the most blissful three months because <laughs> you're just listening to these guys talking to banks and you know and I actually I had, uh, the way I've done it because I was the video editor for it I was um I was putting up the words as they read the words appear on the screen if you haven't seen it and and so I felt like one of those monks that uh, Michael Neal describes that we're going down you know and, and writing and just spent months doing this and uh, it was lovely and uh, what a wonderful book yeah and it's a brilliant resource really really good because they eat they take turns don't they read in the chapter and then they have a discussion about what they're hearing it and it's so rich isn't it that tiny book oh. um yeah and paul sorry to put you on the spot but do you want to talk about the veterans yeah book? sure that is one to be born through Paul and Dave Hill. <laughs> so I read the book as well. Uh, I, I didn't feel, I wasn't as brave as Lorraine or MB, and I just didn't feel in the right place at that time to, to be able to contribute. But um, Nikki had helped me through PTSD uh, that I suffered when I was many, many, many years ago uh, in, in the forces. And, um, and so I... I was reading the book and I, I knew and I, I'd spoken to her several times um, since start getting the understanding and starting to understand the way life works and everything that I, I wanted to help other veterans or anyone really that's suffering trauma, whether it be a vet, you know, veteran or whoever, to just see that it, it's not a it's not a life ender, it doesn't define you, et cetera, et cetera. And um, so um, I was reading the book and then it hit me and I thought, I know what it is. Uh, and um, I quickly text. I don't know if Nikki, if it was you, I text first or Dave, Dave Hill, who I know you've had on it. And I know Dave said something about the book, um, but it, it was one of those. Two. I think probably Dave to, to be that person that uh, so held me to account. And then Nikki to say, you just inspired me to do this. Um, I don't know if it, which way around it was. But anyway, Dave bravely went, that sounds like a great idea. Uh, and um, as Dave does. And um, uh, and Nikki was like, wow, oh, yes, amazing, full support. And, and so we, we created a number of questions. There are, there's four topic areas and it's sort of like before, after and advice you'd give to yourself, et cetera. Um, so that it gives a structure like Nikki did uh, for the book. Uh, and we're, we're trying to get in touch with veterans who've come to the understanding that PTSD is not the end of their life and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and want to share or, or will share their story to help others. Uh, and it's a big, it's a big ask um, for a number of reasons, you know, um, people who um, don't traditionally talk about their feelings, don't, uh, you know, it, even, you know, it's my idea and, 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 you know, well, it wasn't, it was Nikki's idea. Um, but 
even I've struggled with it. So I understand anyone else struggling with it. And, and we are getting people coming forward. And, and this, uh, this last week, we've, we, we've had you know, three more people come forward. To, to So the book will build and the book will build gradually, probably. But we will get there. Uh, and, and then we'll have some amazing stories that, you know, anyone can can access. And, and we decided to not do it for any any charity because we don't want to define it to a particular demographic to a to, to the UK or anything. Because so what I have learned, you know, especially listening to um, the guys discussing the missing link is trauma through conflict, PTSD, is trauma. It, it's what the Ofer from Israel is, is, is on there, and if he's amazing. Um, I could relate 100% to what he was saying. Uh, and he's, he went to war in a place that I've never been to, you know. Uh, and so it's trauma. And so we didn't want to just keep it to one place. We can all help each other. It doesn't matter where we are in the world. Um, and just by knowing that other people are there, they, they've, um, they've experienced it and they've come out the other side uh, and they're living a life and they're living a positive life. Uh, you know, we kind of call it a book of hope, you know, beyond trauma. Um, it's actually called Missing in Action because it is kind of quite um, poignant for the, the, the veteran side of things, um, the Missing in Action, because you do come back completely different to when you went away and, and some part of you, until you understand it, is missing. Uh, hence the name. I'll stop talking now. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, Paul, thank you so much. It's so nice okay. to have you here. Thank you so oh. much. And we, we, we had David Hill, who is actually now in the missing link here in, in the book. Yeah. His story is here. Yeah. We have David Hill twice in this series. Um, and uh, apart from Chip and Jan Chipman, he's the only one we had twice already. Yeah. Um, because because it, it just didn't feel that we had enough time to talk about so many wonderful things that you know and um and uh so his story is here and then on the second time which was the last series mm. he told us about this happening and um and unfortunately because he's busy at, at this time and, and we we tried to get you guys all together today but it didn't happen so uh, i think this is calling probably for another um, to bring you back together, if uh, you would do us the honors <laughs> when the, the book starts taking a bit of form. And I remember um, David saying that um, one of the things is that because he works with groups with veterans teaching the principles, and is that it's difficult that people will want to talk. Because one of the, because part of the training and please tell me if I'm wrong about this. That's what I heard is that people feel that they are a, like a problem and they've been trying to take the problem out of the equation if possible because they're serving something bigger than themselves in that sense. But it's a sort of bringing back to to be able to talk and see that um, it, it's important for people to 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 share the stories, and then it, people start realizing that they're not the only ones that have that experience, um, and it's helpful. Um, I guess I don't know if that's that's uh, how you how you see it, Paul. Yeah, most definitely. Um, the thing with uh, with a, a book, and and we've got uh, set up a YouTube channel, um, an Instagram account, 
although I have no idea how to use Instagram and <laughs> and Facebook page, which has done really well in the last week. Um, and just releasing short videos um, is that anyone can just access it. They can access it without putting their name down on any list. Um, same with the missing link for veterans. You can just access the YouTube channel and no one's got to know that you're suffering. No one's got to know an anything. And, and, you can, and you can see that there's, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You can see that you're not broken um, because there are people there that have been through what you've been through or are going through. And they, they come out. And I think that's, that's, that's what we want to make it. Wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to put the links of all of that um, on the next yeah. video so people can freely go there. And, and it's not just veterans. You know, we've had a beautiful piece sent by um, a lady in America, um, Gabriella, and her brother went to Iraq. And it was how she felt about it. And, and, and I think that's a really important thing that we get. So it's not just the veterans or not ser just serving people, it's also the families. And even people like Dave, who, who help, although Dave is a veteran, he, was, he didn't suffer from any trauma, thankfully. And, and he's, he's helping and that perspective is also a really useful thing because it gives an, a 360 balanced view of of the world in an understand a language that military people or the wider military community will understand. Heart, like, <laughs> it's growing. It's really from the heart. Um, I was just going to say, Paul's a beautiful example of someone who, you know, had trauma and suffered. And, but when they overcome that, when they understand and they fall back out of that into their true nature, they want to help. <laughs> they want to serve. That, that, that's who we are as humans, you know? And so that's the, the beauty of all of this is that, you know, one person, can have a huge impact on our community. Um, and that's why I'm passionate about trying to get this message out in any way, because, you know, it's so simple, really, at the basis of it, but it's, and it's much needed. But, you know, it's, I think the simplicity sometimes makes it overlooked, doesn't it? Um, so anyway, any of us can get that out to the wider community, to, to people, I think it's just brilliant. It seems pretty much everybody here has this story of who am I to go and share or how am I going to word it or, um, and, um, so it doesn't matter in which way we do it or it doesn't matter just 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 go do it even if it's like you're talking to your neighbor over the fence to check that they're okay today because maybe they live alone or you know or um, even you're wearing your mask and you're at the supermarket and you know um just just looking at that cashier or or somebody that's there, just that, that connection. Um, we find that we, we don't really have to go teach the principles in a way, it's like just, just coming from that, um, from that understanding, knowing that uh, we're all the same, we're all uh, going through the same things and that listening, from your heart, listening without uh, putting labels or just, just 
open and being curious to, you know, what's going on with other people. But um, that's already been at service. You you know, you don't have to wait to go write a book or you know, do a series or do. Something. But if you can, just uh, you know, like Lorraine is doing, writing her diary and um i don't know how many here maybe decided to start writing a bit more after this um or or give the book as presents you know to other to the to the friends and family um so um i don't know if anybody else wants to share something um it's me again sorry <laughs> um i just wanted to share that um i last year i did some, a workshop, a two-day workshop for um, military police, Royal Navy mainly, but there was some Marines there as well, and one or two civvy police, and um, it was quite a, square, a scary prospect, as you can, can imagine, but, you, you know, they, the, these guys, there was one woman as well, um, civvy police, but these military guys were so wired and intense. I don't think I've ever, you know, experienced anything like that before um, in terms of that level of intensity and, and stress. And um, even the prospect, we made it a two day event with loads of breaks and it was in a beautiful, um, spa place as well we, they, we got managed to get spa access for them and everything and the whole purpose of it was just trying to get them to relax and drop out of that intense um but they were still working and they were still responding um to things you know while they were there as well but um but it was just it was just one of the most difficult things so i i can i can really relate to the military, the military mindset, if you like, and the training and and the do whatever it takes. And these these are very uh, highly trained, very competitive guys. And it was just, but it was just beautiful to see like on the second day, because because me and my, my um, co-pilot <laughs> um, doing the training, on the first day we really didn't think we were getting anywhere sharing this understanding because because they really were expecting tools and techniques which which we haven't got and um and we didn't think we were getting anywhere and it was pretty hairy and then when they they came back on the second day and they shared their experiences that they'd had at home that evening it was just we were just we couldn't believe it uh, these like really tough guys you know and what they shared and their emotions started coming out and everything and it, it was just I just thought I'd share anyway but it was just I, I saw anyway that it can even get through to the most intense and you know these guys had done tours in Iraq and Every, you know everything the legs were going constantly just getting them to sit still untasked in a room for two days was just so odd to them and you know I, I'm sure we didn't we didn't make an impact probably on everyone in the room but you know there was there was significant feedback to you know to show that that it had impacted them and the, the most telling feedback was that they thought that everybody in the in the management above them, you know, the whole, because obviously they're part of a of a hierarchy, and um, and their their main feedback was that everybody should do this, everybody should learn this, but their bosses don't necessarily see it that way. because it's a culture of do what I say, you know, don't question it, which obviously you need at war, you know, obviously you need that, that kind of um, discipline and training for if you're at war, but we're not at war, 
you know most of the time are we but but anyway I just thought I'd share <laughs> just rambling now so I'm going to put myself on mute <laughs> No, no, that's fine. that's really good. No, thank you for thank you for sharing that because you know what uh, happens is that um, you know whatever you have an idea to do, and if you're like a bit well, I don't know who to do it with, or can I do it on my own, or so just contact us, just to you know put it on the group. Um, just we will be here supporting, you know any ideas, any things you, anything you want to do that you think, oh, what, a cooking book about the principles? Yeah, just go do it. We'll, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll read the recipes, we'll cook with you, we'll just, so just whatever you have an idea and you want to do, you want to offer a seminar, you want to find people that may want it, just we, we will help you. And the people in, in this group um, were talking about the How to Connect with Humans group um, on Facebook are super helpful. Mm. They will just jump and help. And, uh, but what you were saying also reminds me of um, there's a video from Kathy Casey, uh, who worked uh, from many, many years in prisons, and she's one of the say originals like you know like the ones that actually met sydney banks and learned from sydney banks and and it's called uh, from inmates to engineers and the interesting thing is that she's asked by um uh she, she's going to work uh, i think it was with the Franskis at the time and and so they sent her to work at corporate with engineers, with a group of engineers. So she's just there training and they put her on her own unexpectedly with a lot of engineers in a room. And she's just like, I can't do this. They're all talking to each other. And it's like, no, 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 no. Just, just let's, let's talk about, just take it one at a time and tell me, you know, who you are and, and what you do and, and two seconds in and blah 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 they're all busy and you know and as you were saying with the legs you know and I just like I really can't do this I cannot do this why they put me here I don't know it's obviously beautiful told by her not by me but and then it's, it's sort of strikes her that she's like I I do these uh, juvenile you know, prisons with with guys that are a lot more difficult than this. So I should be able to do this. And, you know, she goes like, you know, inmates and, and engineers, just people, just human beings, same thing. Now, she had made a whole idea that, oh, engineers are in a different category from, and once she saw that, you know, the, the yeah, of course, like it helps if, if you understand a language that for the forces helps them open up. But at the end of the day, just people, people suffering or struggling or, you know, having problems with their wife or having problems with the, the kids, just like everybody else. And, um, and it's beautiful when she says, like when she saw that, it took her probably another hour to just like, just just for them to sit down and say the name, and that was it. And when she got out, she was like, "Well, they're not gonna hire me, you know. That this is I could kiss this job bye bye." And and Linda and uh, and George Bransky were outside saying, "We want you, we want you because you are you you're it. You know what you're doing. That's what you needed to do." So, you know, going back to what you're saying, it's, like it's, some, it's not up to us to know whether it's impacting people or not, or what it did or how it helped. Which we, we just go share. In. It's just the showing up, isn't it? it? It's just showing up and being there and with, with no kind of expectation. When we started this series, I don't know about you, but I didn't have any expectation on it. I just wanted to 
put out a conversation each week which turned into a series and just kind of have a conversation about how life works and this is where we are today now if you would have told me at the beginning of the first quarantine we'd be here I'd be like no (laughs) no but we are because we've just shown up and and that's how this book decided you know it's like it's our series our series decided itself that it's going to happen that it's going to keep happening uh this book Nikki has this feeling of like it just decided it was going to come to life to form and um and please know that we are your biggest fans like all of you here and anybody who then you know watches the video we we are your biggest fans because we we will in whatever way we can help and support and get your book your t-shirt your you know <laughs> um we will be clapping and and uh and um, having like this like your book you know next to our bits on our bedside table and um and this there was an idea and then it's going to turn into another book hopefully for veterans through the idea that nikki had mm-hmm. um it It just shows that you know we we our little mind thinks it's doing life but life's living us (laughs) we just you know it comes through us doesn't it It, it, the intelligence of life and it uses our particular skills and qualities and individual characteristics but you know the our little mind can never understand the bigger picture and so um you know being able to just step out of your own way like we were talking about earlier but you know I can't do that just giving life a chance to to come through um and that's what you know little kids do don't they they're so creative before they learn the conditioning of a this is what I, you know, if I, when I used to go into schools and you'd say to a foundation or a year one class, can anyone sing? Can anyone dance? They'd be like, yeah, me, 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 like everyone. You know, then you go into a year six class and you might get one or two hands and that's if they really could, you know. <laughs> so even in those few years, life has conditioned out of them that amazing creative force of just showing up and just seeing what happens and uh, that freedom that comes from not overthinking, not listening to the negative mind chatter about what could happen, what might happen, what happened the last time and all of that stuff. Um, It's just much more of a freedom when you start to see that there's this beautiful intelligent energy sort of living, living us. What a gift. Nikki, we want to thank you so much Absolutely. for being here, for, you know, putting this wonderful book together. I'm perhaps, I, I have to say, I, I get no commission for, for the sales <laughs> of this book, but I, I'm in love with the book and I'm in love with what you did. And, um, and I, I just just knowing that also it's uh, it's got a ripple effect, say, on what you know Paul and and Dave are doing, and um, we're gonna get you guys back <laughs> here yeah. um, to tell us about that. So, uh, where can people find you, Nicola? Uh, so the books on Amazon um, from the heart, and my website address is hippocoaching.co.uk. Uh, so people can reach out there there's email and telephone and all sorts I'm on Facebook and all the normal I'm like Paul I don't know how to work Instagram properly so I'm not that high tech 
So <laughs> put them on Facebook. Yeah, I think people about managed to put like the picture, like my, my daughter who's 17, they are the Instagrammers, so like the, the what's that? Yeah. They won't touch Facebook, you know, like because it's for dinosaurs like us. And, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, still, you know, we, we can we can manage. We can manage. We can manage. Mm -hmm. So, um, so thank you so much. And um, so, if there's anything else that happens, please let us know. Also for the rest of you, and I uh, will be happy to have you here. And thank you for being here today. Next week. We're having Aaron Turner, and Aaron Turner is one of the the young sort of, you know, uh, the young sort of chicks that came out of the of this uh of, of the big sort of uh, original teachers that I learned with Sydney Banks, and um, he's uh, he's uh, created one thought here in the UK. Uh, he he worked and learned with the, the Pranskis in the United States, and um, and he he really have this this passion and this um, you know wanted to help and create something with Lila his wife, and um, and and they created one thought and they train a lot of people to become practitioners. But also they managed to put together um, with Charles Rosenblatt and, and another group of people uh, the, the conference here in London. And the, com the annual conference uh, brings in so many teachers and so many people to tell their stories that is fantastic. So um, he's going to talk about uh, his experience and also finding something that is actually reliable you know like that end of looking for the thing that is going to help you it's like finally finding that thing that stops us looking for what is going to be the magic thing that's going to do it so just just finding that um so uh we are looking forward to seeing you next wednesday uh, so it's going to be at 7.30 UK time, that's GMT. Uh, all the details are already on the group, so the, the event is already created. And uh, so uh, please get in contact if you want to ask us anything. Um, it's been wonderful to have you here today. So thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, thank you thank all. Thank you.